But what about poop and pee on the plane? Where are they dumped? Yes, because it's one of those interesting questions that one can wonder about. When we flush and there's that suction, what happens? Is everything thrown outside? Guys, today we'll take you to high altitudes to tell you about a very practical and important matter, namely how airplane toilets work. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. No, we don't shoot, to put it elegantly, organic waste into the air while traveling by plane. Fortunately, it's not something we do. Gosh, though, during the 20s and 30s, the airplane bathroom was practically a hole. I mean, if you opened it, you'd see the earth below. But let's get back to the present. The only thing that the plane actually immediately expels is tap water. Basically, the water we wash our hands with, this water goes through pipes and is heated so it doesn't freeze and is sprayed out and nebulized. Toilet waste, however, is collected in a tank, typically positioned at the back of the aircraft, which is emptied out when the plane lands. To transport the waste there, the airplane toilet utilizes the pressure of the surrounding area to create suction. What's this suction like? To fully grasp this, let's first briefly digress and focus on pressurization, otherwise we won't understand the concept. We know that the air pressure inside the plane is very different to that outside the plane. It is greater inside and lower outside, and maintaining the air inside at a higher pressure is precisely what allows us to breathe properly. Outside, however, the pressure is lower and the air is thinner. Now, according to the laws of physics, the air contained in an environment with a certain pressure, when possible, will always move towards an environment with a lower pressure. The airplane toilet utilizes exactly this principle. Let us observe it step by step. What happens? I go to the restroom, do what I need to do, then flush the toilet. For a few seconds, a valve opens at the bottom of the bowl, which is connected to the tank and the waste is sucked in. Why is it being sucked in? Because the tank, unlike the cabin, is not pressurized, and so the pressure is lower inside it. In fact, if we wanted to be precise, it is, are not sucked in, but pushed by the air that practically passes from the bathroom, from the cabin to the tank. That is, the air with a higher pressure in the bathroom pushes our waste towards the environment with a lower pressure, the tank. With this push, a portion of the higher pressure air from the bathroom also arrives, but it is expelled from the tank through a small vent in order to maintain the tank at a lower pressure than the cabin. So there's a system that still maintains the pressure difference. Just imagine, this air movement can reach speeds of up to 500 kilometers per hour. I mean, faster than Formula One. But when we're on the ground, does this trick work? In theory, it shouldn't work, but in practice, it does. The toilet still functions on the plane. Why? Because this pressure difference can also be generated artificially, thanks to a pump and that is precisely what occurs. We can say it's the same mechanism they also use at the airport when they vacuum up the contents of the tank to empty it. So why don't they let us go to the bathroom during takeoff and landing? Mainly for our safety. It's the easiest time on the journey for us to lose our balance and especially in the confined space of the bathroom, we risk bumping into something. Incidentally, I saw online that many people wonder what happens if we press flush while we're sitting down. I don't know if anyone actually sits on a plane. Honestly, have you ever sat down on a plane to poop? No. I was saying, is there a risk of being sucked in? Guys, the answer is obviously no. That is, we would have to create an air chamber with our body by completely sealing the toilet bowl, which is impossible because the toilet seat is always raised thanks to supports. However, in any case, the suction is not strong enough to move a person weighing an average of 60 to 70 kilograms. Well, those are strange questions. No, anyway, we cannot be sucked in. This vacuum toilet system, which for us is now the norm, was actually first used on airplanes more or less recently in 1982. Just imagine, on the first propeller planes at the beginning of the 20th century, they used buckets. Guys, I'm not joking. But from the late 30s until 1982, on civilian aircraft, a normal water flush was used, obviously mixed with disinfectants, so practically a system like the one at home. However, this system involved a higher consumption of resources because transporting water by plane to flush with meant carrying more weight and therefore using more fuel. The vacuum toilet system instead does not use water or uses very little of it. The tank of these old water toilets was placed directly under the toilet, which was not really easy the nose, 
but the most absurd thing was that sometimes this tank leaked, that is, this liquid came out. Because of the disinfectant, the liquid was blue and it froze, adhering to the fuselage of the plane, and then it thawed and dripped down. If you are wondering, yes, unfortunately the answer is yes. There were cases where this semi-frozen blue matter rained down on houses, cars, and even people sunbathing. Well guys, I hope these fun facts have been enjoyable. Now I'm sure that next time you flush the toilet on a plane, you'll think of us. Not a pretty picture. Guys, please think about us outside the bathroom too. See you in the next video, always here on Geopop and Science and Daily Life. Ciao!